Hi there! In this video, we are going to create a confirmation pop-up. I just searched on Google by delete confirmation modal and I found a couple of models and I chose this one. So basically, we are going to create this one. Just looking at it, we can start imagining what type of containers we are going to use to create it. Let's see. For example, to hold everything, I could just use a vertical container and everything would be inside it. Okay, so I'm just going to start putting the squares here with the different colors to represent the containers that they are. Okay, now again, we have this white one. Again, it can be a vertical container. So I'm just copying and pasting that. And we have a second container inside the first one. Now we can see that we have the delete label and the closing icon, one in the side of the other. So here we could add a horizontal container to make them be side by sides. Here it would be just a text, we don't need a container. And here again, we have another horizontal container because the buttons are placed side by side again. So let's insert another square here that represents a horizontal container. So this is basically our structure. You could do in different ways, use different compositions of containers, but this one is the one I'm going to use right now. Okay, now going to Power Apps, let's start creating it. First, I will just add a background image just to represent what would be my app. In your scenario, you will have all your controls in there and then we are going to make the pop-up appear in front of it. But I don't have anything here. So let's go to a background image and I'm going to choose from the stock images any image here to represent my app. Okay, I'm just grabbing this one and clicking on insert. The image position is selected fill and here's my app where we are going to have the pop-up on top of it. Okay, so first, as I said, we are going to insert a vertical container. This container will be the main container that holds everything, so we can make it occupy the size of the screen. And we can already give a background color to it. Let's choose, for example, a dark color. And in the custom tab, I can just add a transparency to it. So now it will be on top of the app, letting me see what's behind, but I know that I cannot click and interact with that if we had a button, for example. I'm going to just insert a button behind it just for us to see how it would look. Okay, here we have a button. Now I'm going to make the container come to the top, so bring to front. And the container is in front of the button. Okay, as we just saw, now we have another vertical container that will be the pop-up container. Let's insert inside this container another vertical container. So vertical container. It's here, it's occupying the whole space. So in order for us to see it better and in the correct position, let's go to the outside container, the, contain the first container we inserted, make it aligned to the center both vertically and horizontally. And now selecting the container that's inside, the last one we inserted, we can see that's already in here in the middle. Let's add a white color to it. So now it is all white. And with the same container selected, we can see that we have here the flexible high enabled. Let's disable that. So now it goes to the center because it's aligned both horizontally and vertically. Now we can give it the dimensions we want because it won't stretch since the flexible height is disabled. Let's say it's 300 for the height of this container and the width 400. Okay, something like this. Maybe it's better to keep 500 and that's okay. Now we already have this view. Going back to my draw, inside this container we have a horizontal container 
a text and another horizontal container. Let's insert it. So with this container selected, let's go to insert. I'm going to search horizontal container. Okay, now I'm going to select again the container that's painted with white. So we insert inside it. Let's insert a text. And now again, selecting the same container, this one that's white, in my case it's called container 10. I'm going to insert another horizontal container. See, now we have the two horizontal containers and the text. Let's select both containers in the tree view, pressing Ctrl, and let's unselect the flexible height. And let's make their height to be 80. Now we can see that they have a normal height, they are not stretching. For the text, we can select the text, and this one will have a flexible height. So it will occupy the remaining space in the parent container. And we can make it stretch, so it occupies the full width. Okay, now we start to see the structure of the container. Okay, now going back to the top, we have the label written delete and the closing icon. Let's go to this container now, that's the header container. We can even start renaming things so we can easily identify and, and mention the names during the lesson. So for example, this container in the top, I'll call con header pop-up. And the one in the bottom, I'm going to call con footer pop-up. Okay, now in the con header pop-up, let's, with it selected, Let's insert a text and we can insert also an icon or a button. Since the icons for the new controls don't have the unselect property yet, I'm going to insert a button that will be used to close. In this case, my button is using the modern controls and that's why I can select an icon to the button. So with the button selected, I will already select the dismiss icon and I will remove the text or select just layout icon only. Okay, this button, I will already set the width to 30. And in this text, the first text, I'm going to put the text property to delete. Now with the container selected, the header container, we want that each control goes to one side of the container. The delete will stay in the beginning and the button will go to the very end. So with the container selected, we can select the justify horizontal property to be spaced between and the aligned vertical to be centered. So now it starts to look better. Okay, we can select this container and add left and right paddings. Let's say 24 and 24 and the header starts to look better. For the text, we can increase the font size. Right now it's 14, let me put 20. The font weight, I will put semi-bold. The font size can be even bigger, let's say 24. Here we saw that we have this scroll bar because the text is too big. Let's enable the flexible width for this one. So now it occupies the full width that is remaining. And also for the high, we can select auto high for this text so it increases its high if it's needed. This is what I have right now. Now let's just format the text here in the middle. We already inserted a text. Let's change the text of it. Are you sure you want to delete this item? Okay, that's the text. For this text, again, we can add a padding to the left, let's say 24, so it's aligned with the text here. We can increase the font size, let's say 20, and it's good, it's already good. Okay, now the container in the bottom, we have two buttons, the cancel button and the delete button. So let's go and insert a button. And again, with the container selected, insert another button. Again, we can make the buttons have space between them. 
Here, with the container selected, in the horizontal justify property, we add space between. In the vertical, we make it align to the center. Let's add padding to the left and to the right. I just put 24, so 24 here to the left, 24 to the right. And let's format the buttons. Okay, this first button, let's change the text to cancel. And since it's a modern button, I have the modern controls enabled. I can select the type here I am, and I can select, for example, outline. For the second button, we can change the text to delete. And then the type of the button is primary and we can change the color palette to be reddish. Okay, now it's written delete. See, now we already have a pop-up that looks like this pop-up, almost like. But it's very similar now. We can format things to make it more similar if you want. For example, these containers that are the header and the footer pop-up, they have the drop shadow enabled. We can remove the drop shadow from them so they don't show the border anymore. And now it looks like this. And this button here with the X on it, we can change its styles to be instead of primary, we could select also secondary. Or it could be subtle, so we don't have the border. Now it's just the icon in there, and it looks very nice. Now you may be asking, how do we make this pop-up to appear or disappear? And for that, we need to use variables. But we still didn't learn that. Keep watching the next lessons, because now we are going to start seeing the formulas in Power Apps and learn a little bit about the main formulas and variables will be there. So we are going to return here later and make this pop-up appear and disappear. See you in the next lessons.